Good morning and welcome to worship at Epworth United Methodist Church in Berkeley, California. I'm Pastor Kristen Stoneking and so grateful that you are here today. We have just come through a very tough year and yet as we stand at the beginning of a new year, we can look back with gratitude at the road we've traveled, blessed to still be standing and standing together. In today's worship, we'll lift up the ways that we as a community face the challenges of 2020 as we hear these opening words from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a partner for a, another partner. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them, and they will be God's peoples. And God's self will be with them. God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who persist will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This is a day of new beginnings. Let us worship. Trials here below. I know my Lord has set me free. I'm newborn again. 
Hello, my name is Becky Wheat, and I'm a member of Epworth. I'm going to start with a prayer. It's by Ted Loader from Gorillas of Grace. And when I opened it up, this was about the second prayer I looked at, and I thought it was good for these times. I need to breathe deeply. Eternal friend, grant me an ease to breathe deeply of this moment, this light, this miracle of now. Beneath the din and fury of great movements and harsh news and urgent crises, make me attentive still to good news, to small occasions, and the grace of what is possible for me to be, to do, to give, to receive that I may miss neither my neighbor's gift nor my enemy's need. Amen. Faster than a ship, further than a bomb, see the glowing grass and love throughout the Will you pray with me, please? Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'd like to invite you to think back with me for a minute, all the way back to that Friday the 13th in March when you received an urgent message saying that Sunday, March 15th, would be our last Sunday in the church building for the foreseeable future. Concerns about the spread of the coronavirus had caused us to join others at that time to flatten the curve by staying home. And then the very next day, that Saturday, we received directive from our district superintendent that all sanctuaries should be closed on March 15th. And so you got another urgent message from us on that day saying that worship on the 15th would be online. The church building was closed and has remained closed. On the morning of the 15th, a handful of folks headed to Epworth to live stream our service, something we had never done before, and we were a little bit unsure about it. But what greeted us that morning at the church was far more of a crisis than we had imagined. The entire fellowship hall was flooded with about three inches of standing water. 
A pipe in the bathroom just outside the sanctuary had come loose from the wall and water had filled the upstairs wall hall and rained down through the ceiling and into the fellowship hall and kitchen. Well, that morning um, we did proceed and and stream the worship service from the sanctuary while frantic volunteers and trustees were were mopping up the water. We had scheduled the anthem that you just heard, Apocalypse Lullaby, for that morning, but we had no idea how appropriate that was for that morning. But thanks to the quick action of, of staff and trustees and volunteers and Wick Pancoast and crew, um, the, the, the damage was um, addressed. Um, the trustees dealt with it over the last several months. Our insurance covered it. And fortunately, many of you will never really know that that happened. In those early days, I held out hope that we would be back in the building by Easter. And as you know, that didn't happen. But we began to get better at creating our service in advance. And new talents rose to meet the challenge. Susan Jarden soothed us each week with heaven-sent children's messages that comforted child and elder alike. We moved meetings and groups online and found a new intimacy in sharing weekly communion on Zoom. Our Do Good and Stay in Love with God teams reached out in concern and service, while the Do No Harm team made sure that we all stayed safe. Indeed, we've experienced the depth of the giftedness and the generosity of our congregation during this time. And then in May, the murder of George Floyd brought into sharp focus the need to attend to the other pandemic ravaging our nation, that of systemic racism. We organized ourselves into response working groups and worshiped with leadership from Epworth's African-American members and dug into the platform pieces of the movement for Black Lives. Here now are some clips from those holy moments of reckoning. Dear God, this is my prayer, my letter to my younger brother, who's a lawyer, who is in pain, who's tired, and who's angry. To all of my brothers and sisters, nieces, nephews, cousins, this is my prayer. I hear you and feel it too, my beloved brother, I do. 
I too am sick and tired of being sick and tired. This time has to be different because we need your voice alive to continue to fight for justice for you, for your children, for your children's children, for the voices that were silenced by depraved indifference to black human life. This time is different because our voices are being heard and will continue to be heard each and every time a person stands up and says in a loud resounding voice, enough is enough. Don't stop speaking out and fighting for justice. Don't let the despair take your voice in martyrdom. Live for the voiceless. Vote. Our ancestors did not die for you to join them in death, but to live to bend the arc of the moral compass of justice Dr. King spoke about, and President Obama did help to bend. We have to continue the work to build the beloved community. This time, we don't have to do it alone as a people. This time is different because we are joined by allies of young people who are the hope and change for a better future. Lead, my beloved brother, not in death, but in life. We wake up each morning by God's grace and mercy. The Lord weeps with us and strengthens us to continue to represent God's glory on earth. The only anti-racism movements that have historically gained any traction in America are those wherein everyone, white people included, joined the cause. The fight for the liberation of black people in America has been constant and unending. We've all heard anecdotally of the Underground Railroad, the Nat Turner Rebellion, the abolitionist movement, John Brown, and ultimately the Civil War. We know to a lesser degree about Reconstruction and its destruction and the lynching and disenfranchisement that were part of that destruction. There have always been awful stories about the Ku Klux Klan and its reign of terror throughout the South in the late 19th and 20th century, throughout the South and Indiana and Ohio. Okay. While mainstream America white America knows about these things and knows that they were and are wrong, that knowledge often seemed abstract. It was difficult, near impossible it seemed, for white people in their hearts, minds, and souls to actually feel the pain borne on a constant and daily basis by black people. Now don't get me wrong, I do not throw blame, but I do acknowledge the degree to which racism and blindness to racism is at the very core of our culture. Our culture has been carefully and efficiently constructed to make the occurrence and acceptance of racism comfortable. We also live in a culture carefully and efficiently constructed to make the fighting of racism, particularly by white people, uncomfortable. As a result, it seems that an unseen, unnamed force in society historically keeps its metaphorical knee on our neck. And it's only battled by wave after wave of movements toward justice, and some are more successful than others. And it seems, upon casual observation, that the more successful movements are those that capture the hearts, or better, attract the participation of white people. A young man came to a house of prayer They did not ask what brought him there He was not friend and he was not kin But they opened the door and let him in
And for an hour the stranger stayed He sat with them and seemed to pray But then the young man drew a gun And killed nine people, old and young In Charleston in the month of June the mourners gathered in the room The president came to speak some words And the cameras rolled and the nation heard But no words could say what must be said To all the living and the dead so on that day and in that place The President sang Amazing Grace The President sang Amazing Grace The work of reckoning continues. The summer wore on and Susan and Director of Youth Ministries Orion Lacey heroically held camp, very carefully planned for children and youth, as we continued to pray for frontline workers and all directly affected by the virus. And all of a sudden, in late August, the school year was upon us. Orion lightened our hearts with his back to school video as parents, teachers, and students alike all wondered how we could possibly handle months of online school. And we learned that we could learn and teach online. It was different, but a necessary adjustment. We moved farther into the fall and responded with deep commitments and gratitude in pledging for the next year. As Advent began, we reached into one of the core strengths of Epworth, our music ministry, and found new ways to fill the night with music and light. It was an advent like no other, and the yearning we felt as we approached the manger was maybe closer to the feelings that surrounded the original birth than any other Christmas we've ever had. And now here we are in a new year. To close this look back, we'd like to offer you a sample of our bloopers, our mistakes, and invite you to leave your own bloopers in 2020. God takes all that we've done and all that we are and is continually reordering it all into good. 
May you begin 2021 with the freshness of faith. Amen. Good morning and welcome to worship at Epworth United Methodist Church in Berkeley. I'm Pastor Christmas, Christmas Stone King. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I creak, I can, yeah. I don't know if I want to look at this or not. We know from the story of the Israelites' journey toward a place of political power. I believe that sometimes we wander <clears throat> Now, let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Boom! So good. That in this love, through faith, that hope will bring... You are a true sayer. I'll let you edit that out. <laughs> How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace. No, 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 no. Well, that would have been annoying. <laughs> good enough. Is it falling? I can't tell. I'm paranoid now. Yep, that's falling. I see my hairline receding. <laughs> I give up on most things when it comes to record. I'm so done. I'm so done. I'm so done with recording. Ah! Okay. Woo. All right. Last one for today. <laughs> They knew how to follow the stars. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Fifteen hundred persons. If you are watching at a later, I'm gonna kill this dog. And through another series of events, Joseph was reunited with his brother.
Greetings, Epworth. This is Misty Harvey, grateful, longtime member of Epworth. It's good to be with you all. And now is the time for prayer to raise our joys and concerns in our hearts to God. I invite you to share your prayers, either silently or out loud, wherever you are. And if you're using Facebook, on the live chat, please use first names only. If you're watching at a later time and have a prayer request, please email prayer at epworthberkeley.org. You may also request prayer or long-term spiritual care from a Stevens minister at that email address. After sharing the concerns, joys, and thoughts in our hearts up to God, we will join our voices together in the Lord's Prayer as Jesus has taught us. Regardless of what lingers on our hearts, let us lift our prayers up to God. Amen. When I was a girl each week, on Sunday we would go to church and listen to the preacher preach. She would read the Holy Word and consecrate the Holy Bread. Everyone would kneel and bow. Today the only difference is everything is holy now. Everything, everything, everything is holy now. Sunday school, we would learn about the time Moses split the sea in two, and Jesus made the water wine. And I remember feeling sad that miracles don't happen still, but now I can't keep track because everything's a miracle. Everything, everything. Everything is holy now. It 
used to be a wildcat player, heaven's second right hand me down, but I walk it with a reverent air, cause everything is holy now. Our Creator who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom. And the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, Epworth. It's time for our offering. Let's infuse our offering with love and with our hope for a world that's more just, more kind, and more merciful. These are extraordinary times. These are challenging times. Let's give generously. Let's give with love. Let's give with hope. Please make an online donation at epworthberkeley.org slash donate, or you can mail your check to Epworth at 1953 Hopkins Street, Berkeley, 94707.
Let us pray. Gracious God, may you continue to torment us. May you keep before us the faces of the hungry, the lonely, the rejected, the despised. May you inflict us with pain for the hurt, the wounded, the oppressed, the abused, the victims of violence. Dear God, may you grace us with agony, with a burning thirst for justice and righteousness. May you give us courage and strength and compassion to make our world a better world, to make our community a better community, to make our church a better church. May we do our best to make it so, and in our so doing, may you grant us peace. Until we meet again, in the name of Jesus, the Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm.